secret societies and S-U-B-M-E-R-S-I-V-M-O-V-M-E-N-T-S. Nasa Webster published a book named Secret Societies and Subversive Movements to expose how they were used to further the WRM. She did not, however, come right out and say, this secret power which controls all secret societies and subversive movements, at the top, is the Synagogue of Satan. She does not carry her subject beyond its materialistic and temporal characteristics. She threw a great deal of light on Adam Weishaupt's secret life. She credits him with being the author of the original writings of the Order and Sect of the Illuminati and the founder of the Illuminati. With these statements I cannot agree. My studies and research satisfied me that Weishaupt only revised and modernized the protocols of the Luciferian conspiracy in order to enable the synagogue of Satan to take full advantage of the progress being made in applied science, and the rapidly changing social, political, economic, and religious conditions. He didn't originate Illuminism. The Illuminati simply means holders of the light just as the word protocols means original written draft of a plan designed to achieve a definite stated purpose. The Illuminati has existed since Cain defected from God. The protocols were written just as soon as man mastered the art of expressing his thoughts and recording his future plans by writing on material which could be preserved. The protocols were written long before Zion was ever heard of. Adam Weishaupt was at the age of 28, a professor of canon law at Ingolstadt University. He was a mantled giant, commanding great respect in educational circles. Because he was Jesuit trained, many non-Catholics claim the Jesuits are the secret power which puts the Pope of Rome's plan to win ultimate world domination into effect. Following this line of reasoning the enemies of the Roman Catholic Church claim that it is this religious institution which is the mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Reverend 17.5 My studies have convinced me that Illuminism, under the name Perfectionism, was practiced within the Jesuit order long before Weishaupt defected from God and became a Luciferian. Both movements, Illuminism and Perfectionism, were started to encourage human beings to become as near perfect as possible. There is an old saying, the road to hell is paved with the good intentions of those who fail to put them into practice. The Jesuit order was the greatest teaching order during the 17th and 18th centuries. The synagogue of Satan, quite naturally, infiltrated its agent Ure into the order as they infiltrate into every level of society. Their agent Ure hid their true identity. They were clever enough not to be openly critical of the curriculum of the Jesuits. They simply advised those who set up the curriculum not to teach too much about the existence of the Luciferian conspiracy or tell the students how and why it was directed. Just so Catholics will not become antagonistic because of what I reveal regarding this aspect of the conspiracy which we call the conspiracy of silence. I wish to remind them that even the popes have blamed the rapid development of Satanism upon the manner in which priests have neglected to inform their parishioners on this all-important matter. The bull, some misdesiderantes of Pope Innocent VIII issue December 6, 1484, was for a long time considered to be the papal declaration of war against witchcraft, which is only another word for Satanism. Why the ordained ministers of the Christian religions won't call a spade a spade when dealing with Satanism, and its ultimate purpose, is difficult to understand. Is it that they too are controlled at the top by Satanists who insist that they use the words, witchcraft and, sorcerers? But when we study thoroughly what this Pope said, we find he added nothing new to the subject of Satanism. He certainly made no dogmatic ruling. I am supported in this opinion by Emile Brouet in his 16th century in Satanism, 
and a dozen other Catholic priests and authors. This papal bull first recalls that the care of souls ought to be the ceaseless concern of pastors. The Pope expresses his sorrow that neglect on the part of pastors caused many of the faithful in the dioceses of the Rhine to defect from their religion and accept Satanism, including carnal relations with devils. The second part treats with witchcraft in detail. The third part authorizes the inquisitors, Sprenger and Instituris, to prosecute offenders with the rigors of ecclesiastical justice. This document fell far short of the decretals of Pope John XXII. Because Weishaupt played such an important part in modernizing the Luciferian conspiracy, it is advisable that the reader be given a few facts to enable him to understand how, and why, a brilliant young scholar can be caused to defect from God and literally sell his soul to the devil. Born in 1748, Adam Weishaupt became professor of law at the University of Ingolstadt, Bavaria. Germany in 1776. He specialized in canon law, the law that is intended to keep Christianity on the straight and narrow path of truth. He was lionized by false friends. He was inculcated by so-called intellectuals and modernists. He was taught to accept realistic liberal ideas. Then Satan, in the form of his own sister-in-law, took a hand. Either he seduced her, or she seduced him. This sexual perversion proved his undoing. Letters, among his, page 42 Satan, Prince of this World Correspondence, prove that he became so distraught when he found his sister-in-law was pregnant that he appealed frantically to his so-called friends. He implored them to help him procure an abortion before the birth of the child would overwhelm him with disgrace. Weishaupt's letters proved he was literally as proud as Lucifer. He wasn't penitent because he had sinned against God, betrayed his brother, and broken his vow of chastity. Oh no! His letters proved his panic was caused by his fear that exposure would cast him down from the pinnacle of learning to which he had been elevated at such an early age. Weishaupt found he had many friends, but those who responded to his frantic appeal for help made him pay the full price. Under the guise of friendship, they introduced him to a medical specialist. They supplied him with all the money he required. Truly the devil's ways, first sexual depravity then gold. He was then brought under the influence of the newly formed House of Rothschild. He was retained to revise and modernize the age-old Luciferian protocols. His pride was given further inflation when he was asked to, or it was suggested, that he organized the Illuminati to put the revised version of the continuing Luciferian conspiracy into effect. Weishaupt wrote many books and pamphlets dealing with the Illuminati and the New Order, which was the deceptive name modernists gave to totalitarianism, which is only another name for Luciferianism. In his Code of Illuminism, he gives detailed instructions to be followed by recruiters delegated to bring learned and wealthy and influential men into the Illuminati. People often wonder why lawyers dominate in the field of politics. We will explain. Weishaupt told his recruiters that the success of the movement conspiracy depended on their ability to bring about the conquest of professional people, lawyers in particular, who have the ability as speakers and are astute and active. To quote his own words, Weishaupt told those he instructed, these people, lawyers, are true demons, most difficult to handle, but their conquest is always good when it can be obtained. He recommended as next on their lists of conquest, teachers, university professors, and the superiors of seminaries whenever possible. Doesn't this explain the control the forces of evil now have obtained over our educational institutions, including our seminaries? When students studying for the ministry of the Christian religion can have the truth withheld from them, 
and ordained ministers, who learn the truth can be forced by their superiors to keep silence, the devil has made tremendous strides in developing the Luciferian conspiracy towards its final goal. To prove that lies and deceits are the stock and trade to be used by Agent Yor of the Illuminati, Weishaupt told his recruiters, if there is any man of great reputation, of his own merit, cause it to be believed that he is one of us. This advice was followed in the case of General George Washington. He was claimed to be a mason of the highest degree by the Illuminus after Illuminism was introduced to America. This claim has been proved to be a deceptive lie. Illuminus have claimed, but never proved, that even popes have been initiated into their order. It is regrettable, but it must be admitted that there is a great deal of evidence to indicate the number of priests and ministers of Christian denominations are now being initiated into the Illuminati, the lodges of Grand Orient Masonry, or Pike's New and Reformed Polydian Rite. A letter I received November 11th, 1958, from a member of the Roman Catholic hierarchy, frankly admits he has noticed things about his associates which indicates this statement is a fact. Weishaupt also wrote, the cause he emphasizes the importance of conquering public officials so they can be used to monopolize public offices and bring about centralization of governments. Is this not what is happening in what is left of the so-called free nations today? Even kings and princes are considered by Weishaupt as preferred objectives. When Mattazzini took over the direction of Weishaupt's program for wars and revolutions in 1834, under the guise of director of political action, he reiterated what Weishaupt had said in this regard and we quote, the assistance of the influential is an indispensable necessity to bring about reform in a feudal country. In the jargon of the WRM leaders, this word, reform, means subjugation. Today we find Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands and Prince Philip of England active in the Bilderbergers and other international groups. Today, Weishaupt's revised and modernized version of the Luciferian conspiracy is being furthered by the intellectuals who comprise the controlling influence in the Bilderberger Group, the World Federalist Movement, and the Council of Foreign Relations located in the Henry Pratt Building, NY. These pressure groups force remaining national governments, and their representatives in the United Nations Organization, to further the idea of a one-world government, the powers of which the Luciferians, not the communists, nor the political Zionists, intend to usurp, so that good Christian people may be better able to judge which of their spiritual advisors are real soldiers of Jesus Christ and which are wolves in sheep's clothing, we will prove that Satanism's infiltration into the clergy of all religions and religious orders is nothing unusual or modern. In 1500 Pope Alexander VI wrote to the prior of Gloucester Newburgh and to Insiderus seeking information regarding the progress of sorcery, Satanism, in Bohemia and Moravia. This letter is important because Germany and Bohemia have long been headquarters of Satanism and remained so until after Weishaupt died in 1830. Page 43 Satan Prince of this world Satanism revived under the influence of Nietzsche's teachings. The councils of Cologne 1536 and 1550 reveal that members of the clergy had defected from their belief in God and were teaching and practicing Satanism. Those who comprised the membership of these councils ordered such clergy to be excommunicated. In 1583 the Council of Rhymes excommunicated sorcerers, who make a pact with the devil, who pervert sexual relations, who practice deviltries, and pretend to heal through the powers of Satan. From 1580 to 1620 the disciplinary and dogmatic assemblies of the Protestant religion often discussed the question of sorcery and Satanism both as it was being practiced individually and in general. But to get back to Weishaupt and his writings, 
and to prove that he had defected from Christianity and embraced Satanism when he revised the protocols. He finished this task in 1776. He announced this to the Illuminati May 1st. This is the real reason why May 1st of every year since has been celebrated by revolutionary organizations, and even labor organizations, without the vast majority of the membership even suspecting the truth. This is why May 1st, 1776 is printed on American $1 bills under the Great Pyramid. On top of the pyramid is the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati. Wise helped establish the lodges of the Grand Orient to be located in the principal cities of Europe, and to be the headquarters of the Illuminati which he reorganized to put the revised and modernized version of the Luciferian conspiracy into effect. The members of the Illuminati were at first restricted to about 2,000. They were men who because they possessed exceptional mental abilities, had advanced to the top of their particular fields of human endeavor. They were financiers, such as the Rothschilds and their affiliated international financiers. They were scientists, such as Scheele, and educationists and encyclopedists such as Voltaire. Those who comprised the synagogue of Satan all assumed nicknames to hide their identify. The term, nickname, was first used to indicate a man who took, assumed, or was given another name to conceal the fact that he had become a worshipper of the devil who is often referred to as, Old Nick. We don't want to labor this point. It is sufficient to say that the men chosen to become adepts in Satanism were members of the Illuminati, who, by their lives, words, and deeds, prove they had defected from God. Some were avowed atheists, but the majority willingly accepted totalitarianism, the Luciferian ideology as presented to them by Weishaupt, as their creed. Only a fool can be a convinced atheist. Only a fool can believe that the universe, and all it includes, just happened. Even evolutionists with brains admit that evolution could be part of God's plan of creation under which creatures can develop into a higher plane or deteriorate to a lower plane. The Illuminati have one thing in common. They agree that those who use their brains to win success in this world have the right to rule others with less brains on the grounds that the Goyim the masses or common people just don't know what is good, best, for them. As Voltaire stated so clearly in a letter he wrote to a fellow Illuminist, in order to lead the mob out of their present oppression into a new subjection, those who directed the conspiracy must order those they control to lie, not timidly, or for a while only, but like the very devil, Boldly and always, Voltaire is also on record as having advised those Illuminists, with which he was associated, that they should use high-sounding phrases when addressing the Goyim, and make them lavish promises. He added, the opposite of what is said and promised can be done afterwards, that is of no consequence. The Goyim were encouraged to destroy established government and religions in order to establish democracies. Democracies were defined, deceptively, as being government, and religion, of the people, by the people, for the people. Thus the vast majority understand the word democracy even today. In actual fact the word, democracy, means demoniacal or mob rule. Those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy, at the top, use the, mob, to do the fighting and destroy their governments and religions, then they subjugate the mob. As far as the high priests of the Luciferian creed are concerned, it doesn't matter if Americans and British destroy the governments of other countries as long as the citizens of other countries ultimately destroy the governments of Britain and the USA by wars and revolutions. According to the Luciferian principle wars always lead to revolutions. That is why communist leaders adopted the Luciferian slogan, Revolution to end all wars. The Luciferian policy is, wars to weaken governments, 
revolutions to complete their destruction. After every revolution, revolutionary leaders tell their followers it is necessary to establish a proletarian dictatorship in order to restore law and order. Then in due time will come the socialist republic. That is another lie. The so-called proletarian dictatorship is always turned into an absolute dictatorship. When Lenin was asked, how long will it be before your absolute dictatorship gives way to a Soviet workers government? He replied, that is a question I cannot answer. Who knows how long it will be before the workers go and learn enough to be able to govern themselves efficiently? Unfortunately the mob don't know what is best for themselves. Mob is communist jargon. Goyim is Luciferian. There is really no difference. All lesser beings are considered human cattle in order that the Illuminati could obtain control of the Goyim and make them fight wars and revolutions to further the secret plans of those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy. At the top, Karl Marx was instructed to write the books Des Capital and the Communist Manifesto. He advocated atheism. Weishaupt and Pike and, page 44 Satan, prince of this world other Lucifer Ian preached about the equality of man, liberty, and fraternalism, etc., with their tongues in their cheeks. Pike had to explain his support of atheistic communists to his associates by telling them communism, like Nazism was only a passing phase of the overall movement to world power. Satanism was encouraged in the lower degrees of the Grand Orient lodges established by Weishaupt, as it was in the lower degrees of the new and reformed Paladian Rite as organized by Albert Pike nearly a hundred years later when he took over the direction of the Luciferian conspiracy. Satanism was, and still is, celebrated at the Black Mass. This has often been referred to as, the Witches' Sunday. The Black Mass perpetuates Satara's initiation of Eve into the pleasures of sexual intercourse and the secret of procreation. Adepts are reminded that Satan thus conferred the greatest benefaction possible upon the human race. At the Black Mass the celebrant represents Satan and a young priestess represents Eve. The seduction and possession of Eve is performed before the eyes of the worshippers. The second part of the Black Mass perpetuates the defeat of Christ by Satan. Adepts are taught that Satan is the eldest son of God, Adonai, and the brother of Saint Michael. The Lucifer Ian dogma teaches that Saint Michael, the Archangel, is one and the same celestial being as Jesus Christ and states that God, Adonai sent St. Michael to earth in the form of Jesus Christ in order that he could halt the Luciferian conspiracy on this earth as he had done in heaven. We proved in preceding chapters how wrong and deceptive these teachings really are. The Luciferian doctrine does not admit that St. Michael defeated Lucifer in heaven. It claims that Lucifer won his independence from God and now rules his own section of the universe. Pike said that, Lucifer is the equal of God, Adonai. We will deal with this at greater length elsewhere. The Black Mass illustrates how Satan made overtures to Christ, and tried to make friends with him by even offering him rule of this world if he would join the Luciferian cause. It depicts how Christ's refusal made it imperative that he be destroyed. During every Adonai side Mass a victim is sacrificed, to symbolize the immolation of Christ at the instigation of the synagogue of Satan. The victim can be human, foul, or animal according to circumstances and the risk involved. Research dug up documentary evidence which indicates that in the Middle Ages several hundred youths who disappeared in Central Europe were used as sacrificial victims during the celebration of black masses. Rosecrucianism was closely associated with these ritualistic murders of male and female youths. But Rosecrucianism and Illuminism are now being introduced to the general public as movements based on the highest of ideals. Much more recently, British, French, 
German, and even American police authorities have investigated similar crimes where the bodies have definitely been branded with symbolic figures used in rituals of satanic rites. The third part of the mass consists of the desecration of a host consecrated by a priest of the Roman Catholic Church. If an ordained priest can be hired, or blackmailed, into consecrating a host, he is well paid for his services. In 1513 Pope Julius ordered the Inquisitor of Cremona to prosecute those priests who were abusing the Eucharist with the practices of witchcraft, Satanism and who were worshipping the devil.17 In more recent years Roman Catholic churches have been broken into in order to procure consecrated hosts for this diabolical purpose. One Satanist in America forced his wife to attend communion rail in Catholic churches and save the host she received at communion for him to use. She confessed this to a friend of mine before she died. After a black mass, the worshippers, both men and women indulge in an orgy. The women who take part in these orgies are members of what are termed lodges of adoption. They are used as common property by the members of the male organization. There are several kinds of black masses as there are high and low masses in the Roman Catholic and Church of England services. Satanism also includes a wide variety of sexual orgies organized for the purpose of placing influential people whom they wish to control in an incriminating situation. One man told me that what took place at these orgies actually made him vomit. Satanism is introduced to stag parties in the form of what is known as a circus. These circuses are quite common in most large cities. They employ anywhere from one man and one woman to as many as twenty-odd men and women who engage in every form of sexual indulgence and perversion. Satanism is spread insidiously by the distribution of motion pictures depicting every form of sexual abomination it has been possible for devils in human form to perform. Satanism is being introduced into our schools and colleges and training institutions by those so-called modernists who, posing as psychiatric specialists, teach Freudian theories to their students under the guise of modernism. Under this heading, medical students, and girls learning the art of nursing, are made to believe that masturbation and the practice of homosexualism are perfectly normal practices in the development of a human body and are good for the individual.1817 mag. Munpol. Rom. Volume. I. P617. Pratop. CIT. Hansenop. Sid. 18. We have the evidence of students who attended courses in Canada to prove this statement. Page 45. Satan, Prince of this world Satanism today is advanced by a multi-million dollar output of pornographic literature and obscene pictures yearly. The sales of this mind-destroying filth is increasing steadily year by year. Satanism is being promoted at parties given to delegates attending conventions in large cities and in some private homes, where bacchanalia is practiced today as it was in the days of pagan Rome. But members of the public inveigled into attending the sexual fringes of Satanism are not permitted to know that, at the top, directing all the many phases of this abominable section of the conspiracy is the synagogue of Satan. They are not permitted to even suspect that the synagogue of Satan is itself controlled at the top by the high priests of the Luciferian creed. At first those who proselytize for Satanism get their intended victims to witness sexual performances out of curiosity. Then they get them to practice Satanism by convincing them there is nothing wrong in nature. So their victims sin because they like to sin progress along these lines at first deadens and then kills the victim's conscience. When properly hog-tied the victim is used to serve Satanism's diabolical purposes. The effect of Satanism is to be seen and heard at so-called parties everywhere. Dirty stories are now told to, and by, members of both sexes at every opportunity. 
language which connects the name of Jesus Christ with unprintable four-letter words is in common use. Juvenile delinquency is encouraged by Satanists and Satanism. Satan doesn't bother men and women who serve him well. Usually he rewards internationally minded totalitarians with wealth and power enough to satisfy their selfish materialistic ambitions. The point to remember is this. Every form of internationalism, every totalitarian idea, every racket, every negative organization and movement, serves to further the secret plans of those who direct the Luciferian conspiracy at the very top. Many great men, including His Eminence Cardinal Carol Y. Rodriguez of Chile, when exposing Satanism, as practiced in the lodges of the Grand Orient and councils of the new and reformed Paladian Rite, refer to these two secret societies as Masonry and even Freemasonry. This causes uninformed people to believe that many Masons of the Scottish Rite, also known as Blue or Continental Freemasonry, are Satanists also. This is untrue and very misleading. Not even members of the lower degrees of the Grand Orient and New Paladian Rite practice Satanism. Even those members who are selected to be initiated as adepts into Satanism are not told the full secret, i.e., that Satanism is controlled at the top by the high priests of the Lucifer Ian Creed. Only those initiated into the highest degree are shown the true light of the pure doctrine of Lucifer and required to worship him as their one and only God. Only a very few, carefully selected, candidates are allowed to know that it is the Luciferian totalitarian ideology which is to be imposed on what is left of the human race after the final social cataclysm involving communist-controlled people with the rest of the world is ended. Weishaupt and Pike were both high-degree Freemasons but not one Mason in 10,000 even suspected they were also high priests of the Lucifer Ian Creed. Mazzini directed the WRM from 1834 to 1871 before Pike acquainted him with the full secret. Not one Freemason in a thousand even suspects that Freemasonry, together with all other secret societies, is to be destroyed in the final stage of the conspiracy, together with all other religions, so that only the true light of the pure doctrine of Lucifer will be used to influence the human mind. Bielan de Saragra who initiated members of the Grand Orient into Satanism and Ike explained to them that Satan is the good God, the angel of light who came to teach Eve the secret of how to make human beings equal to God. Saraga taught that Satan possessed Eve carnally, a knowledge which she afterwards shared with Adam and passed on to the human race. Benoit tells us that initiates into the 25th degree of Knights of the Brazen Serpent are required to adore the serpent, symbol of Satan, which is the enemy of God, Adonai, and the friend of man, who with his triumph, will make men return to Eden. Benoit also says that in the 20th degree of the same order, the initiate is required to say, in the sacred name of Lucifer cast out obscurantism, opposition to inquiry and enlightenment. Benoit quotes a leaflet, circulated among Grand Orient Masons, which says that when John Ziska and John Huss were proselytizing Satanism in Bohemia they represented Satan as the innocent victim of a despotic power, God aid and I, who made of them, Satan, the companion in chains of all the oppressed. These two replaced the age-old expression, God be with you with this substitution, may the one to whom injustice is done keep you, proud Han, another Satanist, is recorded as invoking Satan with the words, Come Satan, exiled by priests, but blessed be, in, my heart, Benoit FMIP 46062, Dom Benoit says Albert Pike's new and reformed Paladian right is, as a fundamental practice and purpose, the adoration of Lucifer, it is full of all the impieties and infamies of black magic. Having been established in the United States, it has invaded Europe, and each year makes terrifying progress. 
all its ceremonial is full of blasphemies against God and our Lord Jesus Christ. FMIP 449-454 Domenico Margiata wrote The Life of Adriano Lemmy under the title, Adriano Lemmy Chef Supreme de Frank Macon's Lemmy was also head of Italian Grand Orient Masons. Only a very few people seem to know, page 46 Satan, prince of this world that he was a confirmed Satanist and was selected by Pike to become supreme director of the WRM after Marazzini died. Learn Me is presented to the public, by the controlled press, as a great Italian patriot. But delve into his private and secret life and we find him an idol with feet of clay like Pike and Marazzini, Lord Palmer Stan, Churchill, Ed. Roosevelt and many others. Margiotta says, Adriano Lamy did not hide his worship of Satan. In Italy, all knew he is a Satanist. In the name of Satan he used to send out his circulars, although adapting himself at times to the opinion of the imperfect initiate, but it is enough to leaf through the collection of his diary, reserved for Grand Orient Masons to know his sentiments concerning occultism and the wickedness of one who had delivered himself to the devil. Yes. As a Satanist he organized the anti-clerical movements and boasted of it from 1883 on. In his official organ, the Revista della Masoneria Italiana, volume. I have the Masonic Yearbook from March 1, 1883 to February 28, 1884, page 306. He makes the cynical declaration. The Pope has said, Vasilla Regis prod cunt inferni. Yes, indeed, the standards of the King of the Inferno advance, and there is not one conscious man who loves liberty. There is not one who will fail to enlist under those standards. Thus he, like all other revolutionary leaders, used the word liberty while all the time he worked to lead the masses into the new order which is the polite, but deceptive, name they give the Luciferian totalitarian dictatorship under which they intend to enslave the human race, body, mind, and soul. Lemme goes on to say, Yes. Yes. The standards of the King of the Inferno are marching forward because Freemasonry which by principle, by institution, by instinct, has always combated and always will combat without truce or quarter. All that can impede the development of liberty, of peace, and happiness for humanity must combat today more energetically and more openly than ever before all the artifice of the clerical reaction Margiata, Adriano Lamy, P168-169 Here we see Lamy inject the word Freemasonry instead of Luciferianism. He again speaks of liberty when he and his kind intend to use absolute despotism to enforce their will on the Goyim as Lenin did in Russia. 1917, during the first big experiment used to test the Lucifer Ian theories out in actual practice. Cop in Alban Selle, another authority on how Satanism is practiced in modern times, says he obtained definite proof that certain societies, which profess to be Masonic worship Lucifer, they adore Lucifer as the true God and they are so animated with an implacable hatred towards the God of the Christians, whom they declare to be an imposter, they have a formula which sums up their state of mind. No longer do they say, to the glory of the great architect of the universe, but, glory and love to Lucifer. Hatred. 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 To God be damnation. 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 Cop in Alban Selly goes on to say, It is confessed in these societies that everything the Christian God ordains is disagreeable to Lucifer that, on the contrary, everything he forbids is agreeable to Lucifer and consequently it is necessary to do everything the Christian God fought in to guard against everything he ordains as if it were fire. Cop in Alban Selly says, and I quote, I repeat, I have held the proof of all this in my hands. 
I have read and studied hundreds of documents belonging to one of these societies, documents I am not permitted to publish, and which came from members, men and women of the group in question. I have been able to prove that this pleases Lucifer, also that murder is practiced there, the black or Adonaiside mass always because it displeases the Christian God and pleases Lucifer, Coppin, P.O. 291-292 Margiata relates that Pike reproved Lamy for his rabid Satanism and decreed that the God of Masonry, the new and reformed Paladian Rite ought to be given only the ineffable name of Lucifer. At the International Congress of Brussels in 1886, Lefargus exclaimed, War on God. Hatred to God. In this is progress. It is necessary to crush heaven as if it were a piece of paper. The World Congress in Brussels 1958 was one of the most godless exhibitions ever staged. One could find Satanism everywhere. A Lucifer Ian Adept Brother Land San Solstico Festival of the Clement Friendship Lodge on March 13, 1880 blasphemed with these words, We must crush the infamous one. But that infamous one is not clericalism, that infamous one is God. International Review of Secret Societies, number 17, 1924, pages 309, 310. We have only quoted a few unrelated authors who in the second half of the 19th century found our truths. I confirmed as the result of my own research in the first half of the 20th century. Those who direct the Lucifer Ian conspiracy can keep this information locked up because they control the press and all avenues of public information. But is it not strange that the ministers of the Christian religion don't insist on making these truths known from their pulpits, set up in what they claim are Christian churches the houses of God? in order to drive the final nails in the coffin of those who try to make the general public believe that all Freemasons are tarred with the same brush, Satanism and or Luciferianism, I wish to point out that both Weishaupt and Pike took particular care to provide for the total destruction of Freemasonry, together with all other secret societies, in the final stages of the conspiracy. In the lectures delivered on the Protocols of the Luciferian Conspiracy, as divided into chapters and paragraphs by Marsden, the lecturer said Masons and Freemasonry are to be dealt with as follows. Chap. I.V. Par. 2. Who and what is in position to overthrow an invisible force? And this is precisely what our force is. Gentile Masonry blindly serves as a screen for us and our objects. But the plan of action of our force, even its very abiding place, remains for the whole people an unknown mystery because this copy of the lectures was to be used for arousing anti-Semitism in Russia to boiling point the word, Gentile, was introduced. Page 47 Satan, Prince of this World Chap. IX. 2. The Masonic Watchwords, Liberty, Equality and fraternity, woo, when we come into our kingdom be changed to mean the right of liberty, the duty of equality, the ideal of brotherhood that is how we shall put it. The lecturer then goes on to explain, nowadays, if any states raise a protest against us the Satanists and Luciferians who direct the WRM at the top, it is only pro forma at our discretion and by our direction, because they control the policies of all governments from behind the scenes. There is also a statement made which refers to the management of our lesser brethren. This statement indicates the directors of the Lucifer Ian conspiracy intended to use lower degree masons as they use lesser Jewish brethren to serve their own secret plans and sacrifice as many as necessary to serve their own devilish purposes. Chap. She. 5-7, says, we shall keep promising to give back, to the people, all the liberties we have taken away as soon as we have quelled the enemies of peace and tamed all parties. 
it is not worthwhile to say anything about how long a time they will be kept waiting for the return of their liberties. For what purpose then have we invented this whole policy and insinuated it into the minds of the Goas without giving them any chance to examine its underlying meaning? For what, indeed, if not in order to obtain in a roundabout way what is for our scattered tribe unattainable by the direct road? It is this which has served as a basis for our organization of secret masonry, which is not known to, and aims which are not even so much as suspected by, these goy cattle, attracted by us into the show army of Masonic lodges in order to throw dust in the eyes of their fellows. The above reads as if Jews were directing the conspiracy, but we must remember we are dealing with the high priests of the synagogue of Satan, the masters of deceit, whom Christ told us are them who say they are Jews but are not. Those who serve Satanism all over the world, seeking the ruin of souls, are just as much the scattered tribe as are the Jews. Hebrews. Chap. XV tells what is going to happen to all lesser beings, Masons, Jews, Christians, etc., etc., when we, the high priests of the Luciferian creed, at last definitely come into our kingdom by aid of a Coup d'etat prepared everywhere for one and the same day, after the worthlessness of all existing forms of government has been definitely acknowledged. This lecture was delivered between 1873 and 1901. The lecturer told his listeners it might take a century to place those who directed the conspiracy, where no power or cunning can prevent us usurping undisputed world domination. He tells his audience that once in power, they shall take the following steps to make certain they remain in power. 1. We shall slay without mercy all who take arms to oppose our coming into our kingdom. 2. Belonging to anything like a secret society will be punishable by death. 3. Those who having belonged to secret societies has served the SOS are to be disbanded and sent into exile. Exactly as was done in Russia and is now being done in China, the lecturer adds, in this way we will proceed with Masons who know too much, for death will be the penalty of all who hinder our affairs. We execute Masons in such wise that none save the Brotherhood can ever have suspicion of it, not even the victims themselves of our death sentence. They will all die when required as if from a normal kind of illness. Scottish Trite Masons would do well to investigate and expose who among them are secretly of the synagogue of Satan by their fruits. Ye shall know them. Because Christ told us Lucifer is the father of lies and the master of deceit, we will examine General Albert Pike, alleged patriot, and considered one of the greatest doctors of Masonic science, in the light of his own words, which were never supposed to see the light of day. He said, The blue degrees are no more than the outer door of the temple portal. Part of the symbols are explained here to the initiated, but he you intentionally deceived with false interpretations. It is not intended that he understand them, but rather that he imagine himself to understand them. Their true interpretation is reserved for the initiated ones, the princes of masonry. Masonry, continues Pike, like all religions, all mysteries, hermeticism and alchemies, hide secrets from everyone except the initiated sages or elects, and employs false explanations and interpretations of its symbols to deceive those who deserve to be deceived and to hide from them the truth, which is called light and to separate them from it. 19 It is only when we compare the above statement with the information contained in Pike's letters to Mazzini and others who became initiated sages and the elect of the Lucifer Ian Creed that we can understand and appreciate the terrible truth hidden behind the above quoted words. The word light which he emphasized is proved to mean the true light of the pure doctrine of Lucifer, as he explained to Mazzini in the letter he addressed to him, August 15, 1871. 
19 for confirmation of the above quotation. Read pre-use AF pages 12, 13. Page 48 Satan, Prince of this world I consider many Freemasons among my friends. During the 1930s I had the honor and privilege to be the guest speaker at numerous Masonic lodges. I was so honored by the Ionic Lodge of Hamilton, Ontario, the oldest lodge in Canada on several occasions. It is with feelings of love and charity that I reveal that they are lied to and deceived, and that their society is used as a cloak to cover up the true identity and purpose of the members of the synagogue of Satan who use their temples as their secret headquarters so they can work secretly and mysteriously, in the dark, promoting Satanism and directing the Luciferian conspiracy. I know that Masons, in blue masonry, swear on the Bible when taking their oaths. That proves the vast majority believe in God, Adonai as the creator of heaven and earth, whom they call the grand architect of the universe. I know the vast majority of apprentices mean every word they say when they swear by God they will never reveal the secrets, and I know that the God they swear by is the God they think of as that supernatural being who cast Lucifer and his fellow rebels out of heaven and into hell. I know that of the vast number of Freemasons located throughout the world that only a few, and the very few, deteriorate to the point they are considered worthy to be initiated into Satanism. I know that still fewer are selected to become members of the elect of Lucifer. As far as my studies go, I feel that the insidious purpose behind Luciferian infiltration into Freemasonry and all other religions is to deceive them into directly and indirectly promoting the idea of a one-world government in religion. As I said before, I repeat once more, not one Mason in 10,000 even suspects that those who direct all aspects of the Luciferian conspiracy intend to usurp the powers of the first world government to be established and then impose the Luciferian ideology upon what is left of the human race. I know that some of the very fine Masons I am proud to consider my friends would become violently ill if asked to utter the blasphemies against the God they worship and adore and take part in the abominations practiced at one of Pike's modernized black masses to which he gave the name Adonai Side Mass. Page 49 Satan, Prince of this World